I'm going to talk about inflammation and why it's important. Inflammation is a normal body defense set off when there's a problem, like a viral infection, like COVID, or a bacterial infection, or something else where inflammation is needed to fight the problem and help things heal. What happens initially is that white blood cells are sent to the area. There are chemicals made that increase blood supply to that area so that there's sometimes some swelling, and if it happens in a joint, there's pain. And then after that, there are factors released called cytokines or other inflammatory proteins that initially help, but we can see in chronic conditions and in some people in very acute conditions, these are very harmful. Basically, when I look at aging, it's inflammation and lack of blood supply. And that goes for almost everything. And in our clinic, that's what we treat. Treat the inflammatory response, improve the hormones, which often improve, improve blood supply, by the way, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone are all anti-inflammatories. They all increase blood supply. That's why they're a perfect anti-aging drug. And the studies show that. You've made them for years, they're safe now. Inflammation may be good or bad. Right away, the inflammation is important for healing, but if it persists, that chronic inflammation is a serious problem. It's associated with a lot of different diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease and dementia, diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, arthritis, and depression, which we think is an inflammatory process. When there are concussions or traumatic brain injuries, inflammation is one of the hallmarks of this happening. This explains why some people get better from a concussion and others don't. The ones that get better, the inflammation does its job, it settles down, and there's not a long-term problem. In post-concussion syndrome, where the symptoms persist, there's a very large inflammatory response in the brain, and this can lead to all kinds of problems. Problems with thinking, cognition, hearing, vision, uh, and mood particularly. Often with traumatic injuries, there's depression and anxiety, and hormones actually fight these pretty well, plus there are other supplements that do this. The bad proteins in all this are called, are called cytokines. There's also fractal kinds. What happens when these ha uh, occur in large amounts during a traumatic brain injury? It's called a cytokine storm. It's a huge storm of all these anti-inflammatories, which can cause serious long-term problems in the brain. Surprisingly, with PTSD, you see exactly the same changes as traumatic brain injury. What's triggering the cytokines there is a huge emotional stress. But PTSD is very much like a kick in the head and it gets the same results. COVID is a very big inflammatory virus. We're seeing it go from killing people with pulmonary or lung problems to now we're seeing encephalopathy and brain problems. We're seeing heart attacks. And now we're seeing it in children with Kawasaki's disease. They get the COVID virus, it looks like they're recovered, and they can suddenly get a huge immune response, conditions which can be fatal and need to be treated right away. So this virus is evolving, but inflammation still plays an important role. Also, why do some people get the virus and don't get sick? They've got something different. It's either their genetics, or they could be taking anti-inflammatories and natural supplements or their foods that help them through it, and they don't show the horrible changes. What are the supplements that are anti-inflammatory? Number one, vitamin D. There's going to be a special video on vitamin D that you can look at. But vitamin D is a huge anti-inflammatory. What else? Vitamin C. Cheap, really important. B-complex vitamins, not low doses of multivitamins, but the high doses in B-complex or B100s. Zinc, 50 milligrams. We learned this from SARS. There's all kinds of research from SARS showing that zinc, 50 milligrams, reduce the chance of the virus getting into cells. So it not only helps with COVID, but it helps for other things like brain injuries, it's anti-aging, and that's all part of our protocol. Some of the others, probiotics. Well, how could they work? Most of your immunity is in your bowel. We know that people with a head injury get a leaky gut syndrome. Hitting your head can hurt your bowel. There are hormones going between the bowel and the brain. There's a connection that's often not known. And you need to do something for the bowel so that that inflammatory response can be dampened. This helps heal the brain. This can help depression and anxiety. 
We right now don't know which of the probiotics are best, but you need to be on one. Probiotics are the healthy bacteria that normally help the bowel work and help the immunity, but they can be wiped out with stress, with injury, with time, with antibiotics. Also, we know that the immune system eats up early cancer cells before they can spread. And so that's why a healthy immune system is so important. All of the anti-inflammatories we talk about help the immune system. Selenium, it's a rare earth in the ground. You can get that from four Brazil nuts a day. You don't have to buy a supplement. It's important for being an antiviral. So is melatonin, the natural brain chemical that helps us sleep. The levels go down with time, they go down with injury. We actually treat some breast cancers with high dose melatonin so they won't progress. But this is an alt also an antiviral that's safe and readily available. The omega-3 fish oils are anti-inflammatories and increase blood supply, so theoretically this should be helpful. The other one is CBD oil. CBD is a very strong anti-inflammatory, and I think we'll see as time goes on that it's going to be important for treating brain injuries, concussions, PTSD, and perhaps as an antiviral.